Okay everyone, hiya. I thought I'd do a little tutorial here on um, the environment light. This is a problem I've seen come up a number of times, uh, even among people who've been using this for a while now. Um, some of the testers have. So you've got a scene, I've just got a, a simple scene set up here with a bit of, you know, nice slightly glossy surface, a bit of subsurface scattering. You know, there's nothing special about it. I've got the glossy reflections on. I've got um, ray tracing and backdrop selected. So if I take a look through the scene um, buffers, you can see here I have the diffuse direct, which is the lighting that's coming entirely from the sunlight or the directional light, which is which is here. And I have the diffuse indirect which is the secondary bounce light that comes from the render properties, the global illumination. That's coming in there. Actually, I'll, I'll decrease subsurface just to speed up the render a little bit and you can see the, the amount of bounce that you're getting on the floor there. It's it's very subtle, you can't see. It's also got the, the bounce that's occurring from interbouncing between all the surfaces. Yeah. Um, I've got the specular direct, which is again the specular hotspot. That's you know you've got the the roughness here controls how tight or how diffused that is. I could decrease that, make it ten percent, and it's an, a very very tight, shiny, glossy kind of material. And uh, take a little while to clean that up. Or if I want a nice broad highlight made it quite soft like that. As you can see that looks nice and smooth. Now looking in the specular indirect, this is a little bit noisy but it will clean up with the adaptive sampling. Um, because the background itself is low contrast this scene renders pretty similarly to it would in 2015. This isn't a huge problem, there's not a large contrast area. Right, so I'll just take you back into the main buffers, so you can sort of see this is the whole thing together. Now, what I'm going to do is go into the scene editor, disable the light, so you can see just entirely the property of the environment. So the environment only is lighting it, there's just a simple backdrop gradient, very simple. Uh, if you look again in the indirect diffuse, that's the lighting that's coming entirely from the environment. And of course in diffuse direct there's currently nothing. Same as with the specular direct and there's the specular indirect. So what I'll do, put a backdrop in, a nice HDR. Now, because I've got nice glossy materials, all of the, the roughnesses are quite high, as you can probably begin to make out, I've got a lot of very noisy specular hotspots. And I can tell you from experience, these don't clean up very well. This type of noise is very, very noisy. If I look in the specular indirect buffer you can see how noisy that is and there's a lot of nasty little fireflies the anti-aliasing really struggles to clean up things like that and as, as you can see as it renders it just it's generating more not cleaning them up because it, as it does more samples which is how the engine works the more samples you take, the more noise you're getting, and it's actually a lot worse. That would take quite a lot of anti-aliasing to clean up. Um, I'll try a different HDR. Got another one set up. And again, there's a nice sun one. Again, it's got a, a quite a hot sun spot on his face there. And that that's going to be quite a lot of noise to clean up. 
So I'll go back to where uh, I'll, I'll leave this one on. So if I look in the specular indirect, oh, actually I'll change it back to that one. It was really showing the problem a lot more. So this is the problem we have. Um, very very noisy. There's no important sampling going on because specular, the background, doesn't do that. This is what the environment light is for. So I will change back into normal mode and I will add an environment light. Let's go to add environment. I'll rename it environment just to make it easy for you all to see which one's doing what. And the first thing that you'll notice is suddenly the scene's a lot brighter. You would think that the environment would be lighting the scene exactly the same. Well, the problem here is, and I'll show you, we have in the scene editor the, the, the distant light is disabled. I will look in the diffuse direct and the environment light is directly lighting the background from the background and if I look in the diffuse indirect that's the exact same thing happening in fact actually just looking at that there's more samples happening on the radiosity so I'll up that to the same number 16 and you'd see a much smoother diffuse that's happening. But the problem you've got there is, as you can probably work out, you're getting the diffuse in the backdrop and you're getting the diffuse in the foreground. I'll show you that in the specular. So in specular indirect it's reflecting the environment as you would expect and all these horrible fireflies and in the specular direct you've got a much cleaner much more pretty and with no fireflies albeit it's not perfectly clean that'll take a little bit of cleaning but I'll just let that resolve a little bit if you can look on the actual face and on the helmet there that's the difference between what you were getting there's none of those nasty looking specular hot spots it's a lovely smooth and important sampled backdrop Yeah, I think you can see what I'm doing. So, well, how do we? What what we've got to do here is to remove it from the backdrop, but have it in the foreground. So, go back to my final render. In the radiosity settings, well, I'll untick sample backdrop. So, if we look in diffuse, direct that's the environment light sampling the environment and I look at diffuse indirect and all we have is the bounce light so that's the secondary bounces as controlled by your diffuse bounces here that's just the default values I haven't touched them I have increased the reflection and subsurface values there just for a bit of noise reduction and again if I look right so now we have that we now need to look at the specular direct so the specular direct looks lovely and the specular indirect is that horrible noisy mess so we'll go to the shading model this is where you control that multi select so by shift clicking both materials you can do as many materials as you need to I'll change that to ray trace only now you can see in the specular indirect it looks similar to the, the diffuse indirect, it's only the bounce reflection rays and in the specular direct is exactly what we had before so the combination of those two together means it looks very similar to the previous render that we had without the environment light but the combined effect is a much smoother, much cleaner reflection of the environment I'll 
I'll just let that clean up a little bit. Now it has to be said, the environment light does add an overhead. It makes it slightly slower, but the results are so much cleaner that you need a lot less anti-aliasing to clean up the whole thing. So yes, if you were doing it as a direct comparison in terms of raw speed, it will be slower adding the environment light, but as you can see there, the, the beautiful bouncing, interbouncing that's happening in between and the much cleaner specular means you're not getting any of the nasty fireflies that you were before. Um, I'm going to do another thing just to explain. There is one more step that I need to show you. So for the ground plane, I'm going to change the roughness to 10. It's quite a low value. Now, you can probably see here there's a bit of a problem. Because we've set the roughness to very low, you can actually see the tiles which are making up the important sampling for the environment and that looks pretty horrible. Now obviously on the very rough object looks perfectly fine on a very low gloss, you know, very low roughness material or very high gloss should I say material, that looks pretty awful. Well the simple fix for that is to change the multiple and so important sampling samples here the MIS samples. I'll change that to quite a high value. I'll change it to something like 2048. And you can immediately see, because I've increased the resolution, it's, it's effectively the resolution of the environment that's being sampled, it looks much smoother. Well, not really affecting the speed terribly. It can decrease the speed a little bit of the rendering, but um, the other reason to do this, of course, is, is accuracy. The the large blurry areas of light here um, are quite small in places. So if you've got like a, a quite a high resolution map with a very very tiny little blobs of very bright light, then you need to increase the samples just to make sure you catch them. And again, I could swap this for the other t background just to show you that as a contrast and I'll also point out here as well just to show you because this scene has a very bright sunlight in it if I just get the perspective view you can actually see that even though there's no key light active it's casting a shadow and again if I just decrease that uh, the, you know the glossiness of this make it 50 percent rough you can more clearly see there and while this is a little bit noisy initially this is just the initial samples as you can see you're getting a very clean specular hot spot and you're not getting any of the horrible fireflies that you were getting before I can show you again go back to the camera view and look in the specular direct. Again, it's got a lovely soft sheen, very clean looking specular direct, but that's actually the environment light only, much the same as the direct light. It's actually providing a beautiful uh, clean sample there. And again, I'll just show you in the scene editor the key lights off, that's purely the environment and that's the a very bright hot spot. I'll just show you in the image editor of course you have a very bright sun captured in the HDR which is all that's providing that and if I look in the specular indirect that's the bounces. Now just to just to sort of um, put a little extra thing as well just to, you know, to show you this in the render properties you have samples um, what you can sometimes do to try and clean up this if I set the reflection samples back to the default of one it's quite noisy in the specular and direct and of course the noisier it is the slower it is to sometimes clean up so I, I mean I can probably get away with a slightly lower value so I'll try four and then that quite quickly cleans up 
but it general as a general rule of thumb the less noise that the engine has initially means the less uh, anti-aliasing samples um, that you have to take and I've only got a basic camera setting here of 116 so it's not terribly high AA settings and there you go I'll just turn on his nice subsurface scattering just so you can see that again I'll put it at let's say 80% uh, the scale on that's quite small, but that's just because he's a very tiny little uh, model from a scan. Now I'll just take a little few minutes to clean up. And actually, just to show you, that's all working together. If you look at your diffuse direct, again, in the where is it? There it is, Diffuse Direct. It looks quite dark compared to how it looked before. And if you look at the Subsurface Direct, that's where the majority of the samples are being taken. This, uh, this is a fantastic way to debug your scene. Um, because the direct subsurface scattering come from your light samples, that's quite clean. And then you have your Subsurface Indirect almost every buffer when you generate it has a direct and an indirect. The direct, the indirect being the secondary bounces around the scene and obviously that's where the samples come in. The primary samples come from the lights themselves or in the case of when you have just the HDI in the back, backdrop samples it'll come from your, your primary rays or you could always do interpolated which is quite fast but it's not quite as nice as the pure brute force. It's a little bit poor on the interactive but if you actually do this on the final rendering it can produce much faster results it's just a little bit slow interactively so I tend to leave to play it off. Well, I hope that's helped some of you guys. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, there's a lot of these sort of little gotchas. Um, per preferably, I would have liked it if they had an override button that just said override everything, but they don't. Um, or something like that. Um, you can, of course, alternatively, if you decide you prefer to use the um, global illumination backdrop, samples and then just unclick effect diffuse so you're just using the specular set setting here and you're using radiosity from the brute force and you're kind of doing a mixed mode that's the only advantage you have here with doing it this way okay all right i hope that clears some stuff up thank you very much guys cheers